just so you know I, uh, why you're seeing what you're seeing, I saw this recording where somebody holds their camera in such a way where it's like they apparently are talking on the one side and they're randomly recording whatever the camera's facing while they look at the, the phone camera and I guess the, maybe they're reading off of, so I'm not sure, I don't understand, it's odd to me. But anyway, that's why I have this random thing. But I'm not holding camera, I have it mounted. And uh, so, yeah, that's that. The thought I was having this evening is about um, a first thought. Trying to, if you, I don't know if you've ever done that, where you try to get to the first thought. You know, like in the moment, obviously, getting to your first thought ever. You know, that's something. But the first thought right now, because there's something maybe you don't realize, and if you think about it, you'll probably realize it's true, is we are in a type of automatic where, yes, we are thinking. It's just that the thinking itself is a kind of automatic, and we never really get back to the thought the thought that initiates the automatic, the thought of the day, the thought of the moment, the thought of the hour. And if you could get to that and think about that, where does that come from? Because I'm thinking about, obviously, in terms of God and trying to understand God, it, God had to have this initial thought, this very first thought. Because it says in the beginning, as in our beginning, it's not his beginning, well, then maybe that's a thought. Maybe you can ponder on that. I believe he existed in eternity past. It, it seems to indicate that this eternal God did exist before us. He didn't come into existence with us. And uh, obviously we have not existed forever. This world has not existed forever. He chose to not at a certain point in time, but he chose outside the one who exists outside of Time, space, and matter decided to create time and then space and then matter to put in the space. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And he went on to place the moon and the sun and the stars above this earth. And so he had a thought. He was doing whatever he was doing, creating whatever he's doing, creating, which, you know, it looks like he was creating other spiritual beings, the angels. And when that um, rebellion occurred, I don't know, I don't claim to know, but it would seem that it happened sometime before the fall of man, obviously, because Satan came along. But still, I'm, I'm going at that first thought. I don't presume to know the, all the ins and outs of his first thought regarding us, other than I believe it's totally based in love, because I've discussed that before, how if, if you take it in the context of a God who, who existed before all things as we know them, all existence as we know it, all time, space, and matter, before that existed, Someone made a decision that it would exist and all of the complications and the things that that entails. This mind made that decision that that mind was going to deal with all of those things, all those complications, all those different things that could happen. Once that mind decided to create this existence with beings that have minds who think thoughts and make decisions. That's an amazing thing. I don't know if the two are connected, trying to find, you know, our first thought, your first thought of the day, the moment, uh, of the part of your life maybe that you're in. And I'm trying to focus on that in the context of we're loved and created beings. So, you say, take the thought of the day, or the thought of this moment, make it as, as now as I possibly can. Before you even go on with thinking a thought, there's a thought there. 
because we know there's a thought before we say something. We don't just engage our mouth, well, hopefully not too many of us, and just let all kind of uh, clutter and rubbish and, and gibberish come flying out. We think a thought, and then we say something. We think a thought, and then we do something. And before that thought you thought, <laughs> you think a thought, <laughs> if that's not too, uh, too abstract for you. You know, that's what I'm talking about. Go back before the thought, the thought, the thought, or, the, or go back to the thought, the thought, the thought. That's the thing, is the thing that might give us some understanding where you can get to the essence of what we're about, or at least what you're about now, because we establish these habits, as I alluded to earlier, where we are all on this automatic, we are all automatic, but it's not, a topsy-turvy helter-skelter automatic, we made decisions that led to this certain kind of automatic. And every so often, like I also mentioned earlier, is there'll be this huge paradigm shift or some epiphany, like, oh my goodness, and you'll, you'll change the way you look at the world, the way you look at life, the way your understanding of the meaning and purpose of life. And then that initial thought that launch pad thought, so to speak, becomes a different one. It becomes something different, and then it goes back to being automatic. You're now set an automatic. And I'm not saying this is something you should contemplate all the time. You know, the old saying, don't, don't sit around staring at your belly button. I'm just saying it for the purpose of, of get, like I say, get that understanding and maybe a little insight into your creator because we are made in this likeness i know everyone focuses on the image but a likeness i think is important as well because in in his likeness i am an individual and in likeness i have certain tendencies with the my my thought processes i say me i mean generically us we our our minds our beings are similar to him not that you know the, the deity and the perfection but in the construction a physical construction that is made after that pattern of the likeness of that perfect God. Um, like I say, without the perfection, but still we have this, this setup, so to speak. And uh, if you could somehow get back to when you're a little baby or whatever, and you're establishing these groundworks for whereby you set up your automatic way of going about things, that would be neat, but we can't really do that. At least I'm not in tune to that. I know they talk about going back time travel through hypnosis and all this. I'm not, I'm not in any way suggesting anyone should do that. I'm just saying, to get back to it here right now. Can you get to the thought before the thought that led you to think or do or say whatever it is you're thinking, doing, and or saying that thought? And we all would have our own way of doing it. Maybe it's too abstract. It's too weird for you. I kind of like visualize it in a way. I have that thought. And what's the one before that thought? And it's kind of mind-blowing in a way. And, you know, it might not even be comfortable for you to do it. So if it's not, then don't. But if you can, I believe there's some insight there as to understanding and realizing that, yeah, I kind of do kick it in the automatic, but, you know, that's okay, because we all got to survive, and we got to do things on a fairly rapid basis throughout the day, throughout life. Can't be sitting here thinking about what I'm thinking and how I'm thinking it constantly. You can't do that. It's good to be on this sort of automatic with your, with your set or state of normalcy so to speak, um, in a default position, for lack of a better term. So you can you can just get through the day and do what you got to do, how you do it. I'm just suggesting that maybe every so often we kind of consider, okay, what is the thought before the thought? What is that thing? Why am I doing this the way I'm doing? Why am I even thinking the way I'm thinking? Why do I believe what I believe? And I'm not trying to say this is some revolutionary thing. I know people do this all the time. It's just 
this is my channel and I'm, I'm sharing it because you don't see it a lot, maybe in philosophy classes or something, I don't know. But just think about why do you think what you think? Because that's how I had a big paradigm shift in my life. And I suppose most of us do. We stop for a moment and we say, hey, wait a minute. Why am I believing this? And it's not a bad idea to do that every so often, not constantly. So you can be shifting all over the place. Because hopefully you, you get more grounded, you get more concrete in your beliefs as you check out and analyze and see, why do I believe this? I mean, really look at it. Because what I found out was that I was believing things because people were telling me to believe them. I had certain beliefs that I had scrutinized and looked at pretty hard. And others I really didn't. I took on faith because, you know, nice people, good people around me, well-intentioned people, smart people, talented, gifted, spiritual, however you want to put it. And, uh, and it seemed to be working for them. And what I was doing up to that point didn't really work, so why not trust them? It's just that the thought before the thought is the one that originates from the thinker, the one that, that says, you are mine, and I made you. I made you for a purpose. I made you for the meaning that I want to give your life. That's kind of like the, the basis of it. It's not to, to lead you or anything to tell you what the thought before the thought is, but... Uh, or I'll just tell you, that's where I found it, the thought before the thought, is that reality, the reality of I don't even have a thought before, during, or after the thought, except for the fact that this divine one, this spirit that created everything, literally, before there was anything, created me and gave me the ability to have a thought. That's the thought before the thought. There must be something there. This great, incredible actor of love, creator of love. I don't mean actor as in like a hypocrite. I mean actor as in he acts on his love. It was once an idea, and I say it, I mean all this universe and me and you. You were an idea, I believe. You were an idea of God. God had a thought, he had an idea, and so now you are, because the action was taken. And so behind, the thought behind every thought, I think it's good to consider that reality. It will help you to understand the thoughts that you think more, or maybe even guide them, or counsel them, so to speak. It says in the Bible that, that God does things after the counsel of his own will. And I would suggest to you at least consider that that's a pretty good thing to trust. God who, who does and accomplishes and achieves after the counsel of his own will is a very good thing to trust in. And he has something for you because you're not a mistake. You're not an accident. You're not a happenstance. You are a being who was created by a being who has purpose in everything he does, even if it's just every so often to giggle and have fun and enjoy life and to draw the other substantive things. You, there is something behind it. There's something behind the automatic. There's something behind <coughs> the everyday mundane things we do, which I'm not knocking them. They're all things we have to do, and they're good things. They're about taking care of business and paying the bills and <laughs> maintaining friendships and all the different types of things we as humans do. It's just good to get in touch with the thought behind the thought, the thought behind you, because you are somebody's thought. And he knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you, saith the Lord, as the verse says. <coughs> thoughts of peace and not of evil give you an expected end. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get this extremely dry throat now from all my yapping. So yeah, that's my thought. I meant it to be like five minutes. It went on for eternity past. So if you only if you dropped out ten minutes ago, don't worry about it because I went way long. But know that someone had a thought 
that someone is the the lover of your soul you are loved and accepted like you will never know i i don't claim to know the vast quantity or even the quality of that love i just know it's perfect and it's endless my mind doesn't comprehend endless or infinity but i believe it i believe it because i've observed things and that's all this really is it's just a suggestion to observe things and think about it think about that thought before you were here what's behind your existence who is thinking that and consider what i say that it might be true i found it to be very true it might be easy for me to say you know living the blessed life i have i mean i we all have hard times but i certainly don't have hard times as some people and it might be easy for me to say because i got all my fingers and toes and most of my loved ones are still alive and all that but from an eternal perspective which we can't really have but if you consider that that thinker who thought of you and decided that you would be if if it's true that he has an eternal perspective there just might be a very amazing and interesting fascinating beautiful and endlessly discoverable reality in that thought behind the thought in jesus name Amen.